In this episode, we will show you different ways to stay clean with limited water resources on the Atlantic Ocean. And we arrive to a place not many YouTubers go. We just crossed the fucking ocean. <laughs> But first, this is me, Kim, there is Bart, and here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33-foot sailboat, Tranquility. Last week we took you with us on board and made a slow TV episode on how a regular 24-hour day looks like when crossing the Atlantic Ocean. We are on day nine now and we're leaving Cable Ford behind. So uh, we are not making a pit stop at Cable Ford. We have enough fuel left so we think we can manage it towards Suriname. And um, yeah, the islands look beautiful though, so <laughs> uh, mixed feelings by not stopping. After Cape Verde, we are still struggling with the wind, so we switch a lot between the sources. Every morning the wind drops so we put up our parasailer and by the end of the day we will take it down and put our white sails back up. Just like that, we're in night sail mode again. One reef in the main, you know, uh, pulled out on the other side. Time for a shower. We have a shower on board. You need to sit down uh, and you can pull the faucet. faucet out and then you can shower underneath. And we have the luxury of a boiler. So we do have hot water as when we are on the engine. Uh, but during a crossing we need to be careful with our water supply because it's limited. We only have 220 liters in our tanks, so we will not shower uh, inside, but we have a different solution. Mm, that's nice. So our solution to shower for the first uh, couple of days, because um, you cannot store this water for a very long time in, uh, beca because of the uh, Legionella bacteria. Um, we have the shower bag, and we have in the luxury that there is no wind at all, so we can shower outside with just a little bit of sweet water. This is for the first days. Oh, that's nice. shower setup <laughs> number two uh, when we don't have a shower bag full of water anymore it's just a bucket full of ocean water <laughs> some 
soap and to rinse off with some sweet water we've got just a simple solution And then there's of course a third solution, rain. School! And um, I was outside and it came in hard, so I told Kim, just shut down everything, close everything. I'll be outside and I'll take my uh, long lasting sweet water shower. So I just put shampoo in my hair, but now the rain has got to keep going because otherwise I have the soap in my hair. And then we finally have the wind we were waiting for. It's uh, 8 to 20 knots wind. Uh, we're doing 6 knots of load speed. And yeah, this is just perfect. So now we're, uh, we're sailing very fast and smooth, but uh, tomorrow the waves will become uh, bigger and the smoothness will be over. So life on board will be harder, but we're also making good progress. Never a dull moment on the ocean. What happens? Our solar panel, a big solar panel on the Ark, uh, isn't working. So we need to find the cause because now we are not making any sun power, getting any sun power. And we need it for the batteries. Can you find the problem? No. Mama, what are you doing? All right, fix it. I noticed that uh, our uh, energy consumption, our battery was low. And so I checked our Bluetooth app of our solar panels. And it uh, mentioned that the big solar panel on the arch didn't work. Um, I checked my uh, electrical system and I found a loose connection of the cable. And I fixed it so well and properly in there. Well, not properly so tight. There's too much tension, I think, on the cable. And it just got loose. So I have the control box loose now. Every cable is fixed again. Now we just have to get this back in there. working again.
some people think we have a very tiny boat to cross an ocean. Which is true, but the advantage is we can sail the boat on our own. Because we have Liz on board, you will see a lot of sail maneuvers done mostly by myself or just by Kim. At this moment we need to alter course a bit and we need to jump, which means get the mainsail on the other side. First we roll in the Genoa and we do not sail straight downwind but a bit in an angle so the mainsail will stay on the right side. Then we pull the mainsail into the center of the boat. We turn the back of the boat through the wind so wind will fall in on the other side of the sail. We switch the preventer to the other side then we ease the main and tighten the preventer. This is a line which prevents the boom to slam back to the other side. The only thing I need help for is when flipping the pole to the other side. One of us needs to be at the bow and these are the moments we want to have the other in the cockpit. Just to have eyes on each other. And in this case you notice we are getting tired being this long at sea and a fault can happen in the blink of an eye. I forgot to clip myself in and this could have been a disaster. thinking about maybe uh, to heave to so slow the boat down and just lay uh, on its sails but don't make any speed uh, it will keep the motion out of the boat and uh, that will give us a night to sleep because we were very tired and uh, we didn't get much sleep last days but first I tried to uh, go a little bit more windward with the boat and um, and that worked out. The, uh, the the rocking motion that went uh, that was gone, and it was only the the wave motion, but that was okay. So I fell asleep, and I had a very good good sleep. How was your night? Bad. Why? Bubbly, bubbly. Boat went all the way. So. I will catch up some sleep in the afternoon. You hope? I will. It's a beautiful sunny day, but as you can see, wind and waves are picking up. So it's time to put in our third reef.
We're at the end of our trip. Um, I think we have two more nights to go, and then we'll uh, we'll drop probably drop anchor at Suriname River. The night's a bit different because um, we had a befriended boat true north, and um, we s they sailed away from Tenerife two days before we did, and we kept in contact via the Iridium Go. Uh, so every night and morning we had contact about how everything goes and even though there are 400 miles in front of you it still gives you the feeling that you're not alone and uh, but now they entered the uh, Suriname River as they, they are already uh, there uh, so it's kind of strange I'm uh, very happy for them to be there but for us it's kind of strange that they're already there and we are still out on the ocean only if it's just three more days and we're gonna be there as well so, um, I thought I would give you some impression of the sounds you hear doing a night shift on the ocean So we haven't have spotted that much wildlife yet. Yesterday we saw a Portuguese warship and this morning, oh, I hope I can show it, but we saw a school of smaller fish, then some bigger fish and then a few really big fish. So they are under the surface and you can see them in a wave with the sunlight. Um, but it's pretty cool to see how many life there is underneath your boat. Grey green, but really green. And we've got some uh, jungle land birds flying all over the place. Pretty nice. So, uh, five to six more hours to go, and then we're at the entrance of the Suriname River. Pretty excited. We just crossed the fucking ocean. <laughs> Twenty-five days. Twenty-five days. It was a long-lasting dream. I'm very happy that I uh, could complete it with our small family. This is it, guys. Engine is running. It means we are uh, heading towards the river. Uh, the Suriname River. Around four o'clock Suriname time we arrived uh, on the Suriname River and we because of the current we wanted to wait uh, when the current was in our favor so we dropped the anchor and we had a short sleep of two hours and we just hoisted the anchor again and now we are cruising down the Suriname River. I see you guys.
Well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.